thing. I think the best thing I discovered this week is that Pep Guardiola has definitely seen those <laughs> multiple videos of you and I, you and I, <laughs> stating that he's a cunt. Tim Sherwood here. You're listening to the Villa Podcast. That morning sky gave me a look. So I left while you were sleeping. That's all it took. Martinez, Cash, Pau Torres, Mings, McGinn, Kamara, Ramsey. I'll get to Bailey later. Buendia, Watkins. All gone, all missing, away to the treble win in Man City. But why am I still so annoyed? Why am I still so disappointed? <laughs> There, there was a beauty in the build-up to this match where we were all just embracing the chaos. We knew we were going to be down a lot of players because we've been down a lot of players all season. Not that anybody in the wider media seemed to actually realise that or care about it. But we were sort of thinking, ah, do you know what? This is a shot to nothing. We are away to Man City. Of all the games that we've got nothing to lose, this is probably it. You would take three points against Man City at the start of the season. And like... Let's just throw Duran and Zaniolo at them and let's enjoy the madness. Who knows what will happen? We know it's going to go one or two ways. We're going to absolutely fucking love it or we're going to absolutely fucking hate ourselves. (laughs) And still, why am I still so annoyed? Why am I so... Well, why do I have that feeling in my stomach after this match? What was I expecting from it? Why do I expect way better than what we got? (laughs) <laughs> yeah the optimism coming into this game really lets you know how fucking stupid sport is and what it can do to all our ways intelligent people I, I was actually sitting in Croke Park watching Derry win the National League Division 1 football finals on Sunday as you know Conan you got me the ticket <laughs> but I was sitting there sitting there thinking how much have our lives improved in the last five years you know five years ago Derry were winning the Division 4 title sorry I'm really conscious of the fact that Two things, the fact that there are a significant amount of people listening to this that aren't Irish and that there is likely to be a huge intersection of people who listen to this podcast and people who end up doing a sports Wikipedia rabbit hole. And <laughs> and I like it, Conan. I like the fact that someone is going to be sitting in Birmingham or Virginia saying, Jesus, I can't believe there used to be a rule that meant you couldn't get an all-star if you were sent off during the season. <laughs> Kieran McKeever was robbed in 1993. But I, was just, I, I wasn't just thinking about the GA when I was in Crook Park. I think I, I was I was thinking about association football. Like they lifted that rule as well a few years ago. Rule forty two B, the GA prohibits the contemplation of foreign sports within or within the environs of the association stadiums. But I was thinking about the fact that <laughs> that weekend five years ago to the day, Aston Villa were bang smack in the middle of their ten game winning run, and that would get us into the playoffs. And I was thinking, my. God, what a trajectory we've been on since. <laughs> and maybe maybe the plummet to earth under Stephen Gerrard was just so we could pick up a bit of speed for the fucking ramp that Unai Emery built. And I was thinking all this coming into this game against Man City at the area. And then I saw the fucking starting 11. And I thought the Stephen Gerrard plummet was a crash to earth. Then fuck me. And you know what? That isn't even the worst of it. The worst of it is we threw that game away. The three, the last three Man City goals, all of Foden's goals were all completely avoidable. Man City were not good tonight. We just gave them three goals. Man City were not good tonight. And Man City, I've got news for you, haven't been good for a long time. I mean, the stat is, I think this is the first win that they've gotten out of any team in the top five this season. They're not the same Man City. But Pep Guardiola has gone very conservative now that he's got everything to lose. He's basically won everything with them. And now it's only downhill from here. That will freak him out in itself. The Haaland thing, as we saw tonight, is obviously puzzling him. He sold Gundogan. He sold Mahrez. He got rid of some of their better players. He's actually managed to thin that squad that costs God knows how much now at this stage. And we're all left puzzled still with like what is the thinking behind it and we're not seeing any justification. It used to be when Pep did something mad, it didn't matter anyway, they'd win. But they are they're treading water here at the minute. Like it's 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 not the same runaway train. And that is what 
not only frustrates me, even though I just reeled out 10 players who could start for Aston Villa, who, who usually start for Aston Villa. I read yeah. them out there to start a podcast, not available to us. And even though they're all gone, I still thought, geez, that Man City team, <laughs> that Man City team are there to at least have a point taken off them. And that's what worries me too, frustrating on an Aston Villa point of view. But I think I was sort of writing off this game for Spurs. I, I'm not writing it off anymore. Except Spurs yeah. could definitely beat Man City. Yeah, very fucking generous of you there when you were talking about Man City having beaten a team in the top five. They fucking they weren't playing against a team in the top five today. You've referenced it enough there. Aston Villa had two players from their best team starting today's <laughs> match. Like if you were right to write down or even just reel out like you did. A team with the players who didn't start tonight. Most observers, and I mean informed football fans, would think Aston Villa were fielding a full-strength team. Mm. They wouldn't notice the one or two changes that we would make. The fucking commentators didn't notice. The, the, the commentator tonight had to interrupt Jim Beglin from counting his money and ask him about Watkins being out, <laughs> as if that was the only big thing. Jim Beglin re- constantly referred for, throughout that game that Villa have tried to freshen things up. Freshen things up? Our team has been fucking decimated. <laughs> and at the end of the game, the commentator starts lauding Man City. Man City, much changed. Didn't reference the fact that Aston Villa had two players from the start of 11 in the fucking team. And I got a quick detour here as well. I am fucking sick of hearing Man United fans talk about their injury crisis. Yeah. They're missing a fat left back and a shite left back, <laughs> a tiny centre half, an ancient centre half, and a shite centre half, <laughs> and whatever Anthony Martial is supposed to be. Who gives a fuck? Aston Villa have had a horrendous time with injuries this season. It'll be like... It would be like me, the, the team we feel today, would be like me turning up to do the podcast every week without you. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, you know, for a, a pal in the media, con, and I actually quite like you. Like you, you're, you're one of the better ones. And, and, and most of the time, I slag you off when it's when it's not about your football ability. I, I am taking the piss. But like, I, I couldn't get through a season of the Villa podcast without you. It would be nonsense. It would be mayhem. It would be like Aston Villa being forced to play Callum Chambers centre midfield against Man nah. City. Plenty of stuff like that to come back to in this podcast, but we have to go through, unfortunately, five goals. And the first of them all starts with... like you, you're, you're saying there that Aston Villa have two players from their usual starting team, and you're counting... Douglas Louise tonight. Like you you're you're, <laughs> you're counting this version of Douglas Louise, which I don't know what it was. It was like talk about going back to twenty nineteen. We didn't even have him back then, but it was like that. Like this was this was the, the sort of level of performance he put in against like, at his old his old turf and it was sort of I sort of thought we would have gotten better, but the first goal comes and it's it's Foden to Doku to Rodri. And like th- Tim that's, I don't want to get at him because he's he's not a centre half, but it, he wasn't a centre half tonight either. Nor was he a holding midfielder. Him and Dougie were all over the place positionally, and I don't even really blame them. Again, I'm going to come back to this for the Glen Whelan Award, but it's just it's just so easy to move them around and find space. And Rodri just puts like, I mean, it, it felt like tonight that you and I, Emery hadn't seen Rodri play. Like we were so flat across the back, and we were just giving him space to just move it around. He he is the one you have to stop. Whatever about everybody else moving the ball and moving you around, get to him, and it will make things easier. Very very well. Like I'm, I'm sure you want to come back to it in the wheel. Very strange that Morgan Rogers was up top. Like even in a defensive setup, he seemed to be more concerned about pressing the Man City centre halves. He absolutely should have been dropping back. Like this goal is so simple. And that wasn't exactly unexpected, unfortunately, when you see the team that we've listed today. <laughs> it's a it's a straight ball inside the fullback and a deep run from a deep line midfielder. Who was picking him up? Who who was picking their nose when they were being given their instructions in the dressing room? Yeah. I know this was talked about. A pullback from a Man City winger into an oncoming forward. This was covered, unlike Rodri's fucking run into the box. This was definitely talked about. Somebody has not tracked that run. Somebody has switched off. This has to have been what we were focused on for the last three days. This is what we had to stop for Man City. Okay, let's enjoy ourselves for a minute because we did get a goal. (laughs) And it was big, chaotic, 
John Duran, and it started with Big Zaniolo. The chaos that we were threatening did come together for what would you say 10 seconds and it's a lovely ball inside from Zaniolo inside to Rogers. he runs for the first time in the match and probably the only time on the ball he carries it forward a little bit gets it to Duran again and then it's just a lovely one too look at it, just a ball into Rogers, who has the confidence to push it back in front of Duran. knowing he'll get there first knowing it's carnage that he's charging in on that ball and knowing he will spank it with his left foot right into that far bottom corner Crack and finish, great move, we slice through them. And then we had to wait for 90 seconds to look at the least offside calls of all time over and over and over to see if they could find anything to disallow this goal. Yeah, it's an it's an absolutely brilliant goal. Like do you remember the good old days when we were drawing one wall against the against the champions with the shittest, most demoralizing starting eleven we fielded it in two years? And it's actually made all the better as well because it started with a lovely little foul at the age of our own box in the build up. Yeah. I, I wouldn't trust fucking darn England to officiate a game of hungry, hungry hippos, to be honest. It was fucking dreadful tonight, but for both teams for once. And then you're right, yeah. Morgan Rogers' only touches in the game are absolutely brilliant, and he slices them open. And what a finish from John Duran! So calm, just looks up, sees the bottom corner, and puts the ball in there. So every single time somebody does this, it's so mm. simple, and it's an absolutely brilliant goal. The movement, the fluidity, the run from Duran as soon as he sees Morgan Rogers looking for it. After Zaniolo makes the run that Duran turns down. Maybe he did that intentionally, Conan. I don't know. I don't know if Duran even knows what he's doing anymore. <laughs> he's just out there playing on instinct. And what a moment of instinct that was. It was a brilliant goal. And then you're thinking, okay, if we can get to the break now, one each, and we still have Bailey to come on. We still have what I thought was Pau Torres to come on. We still have Tielemans. We still have even Alex Moreno. Like What a lift that would be now if we can, if we can keep this match tight and bring these boys on. I didn't know we weren't planning on bringing these boys on and I didn't know that we were going to concede one of the worst free kicks I have seen and it's it's Phil Foden gets gets his hat trick up and running really this is the first of them and like it's a terrible Douglas Louise foul and we've seen that too often in this game again it's a terrible reaction from Jack Grealish who wants him he wants a second yellow for his ex teammate for uh, he wants a second yellow against the club that he loves, the club that he dived against in one of the last games he played to win a penalty. <laughs> it's a terrible free kick from Phil Foden, and it is terrible, terrible, terrible stuff from Big Zaniolo, who <laughs> I am taking away the moniker Big from him now because I talk about Zaniolo's jib probably far too often. Um, <laughs> and this is not what I mean by it when I talk about I like the cut of Zaniolo's jib. I don't like, and he died. I, this was awful to see. One of the worst things I've seen, actually. He, he gets himself out of the way of a ball that's coming at him from 10 meters away, of a, of, a, of a little curling ball as well. It's not like it's been absolutely spanked. He jumps out of the way of the ball. If you're going to do that, just say, lads, look, I'm no use in this wall. If this ball <laughs> comes near me, I am going to get out of its way. No point in having me here. Like, there, there actually wasn't. It was sad to see. And it goes into the net then because we've just we, we've let a bad free kick go through. Yeah, we've let a shot on target going through on Robin Olsen. I'm only joking. We'll come back to Robin <laughs> Olsen later, I'm sure, in the podcast. I, I I don't really mind the foul from the Wees. I mean, he had the ball and gave it away trying to drag back at the edge of the box. That's the fucking problem. He had passes on there and then he has to foul Phil Foden because Phil, Foden, Phil Foden's at the edge of the box. It, there's chaos going on there he might as well bring him down there and give him a free kick that he's just going to smash into the wall it's a fucking dreadful free kick from phil Foden. it goes about fucking three foot off the ground and look i'm not the celebration police people should celebrate whenever their team scores a goal don't go away giving it the fucking machine guns you've hit one of the worst shots you've ever hit in your fucking career what the fuck was that about you'll have plenty of opportunities to celebrate don't worry you scored two screamers later on in the game pal but like yeah Danny Lula does two things wrong here. He separates from the wall. That's that's unforgivable. That's just that's just a really bad technical error. But then he reveals himself to be a fucking coward as well by turning his body. Turning mm. his body from that shot as well. He actually contorted his body to make sure there was just enough space for the ball to squeeze past him. Contorted his body like the shittest magician in the world. Zaniolo, the Magnificent, 
unbelievable. <laughs> and you can actually see in the replay as well. You can see in the replay, Konza looks at him. Konza knows exactly what's happened. Yeah. He's annoyed. I cannot believe Ezra Konza. I'm a little bit disappointed in him. I can't believe Ezra Konza didn't start a riot. Yeah. What the fuck is he doing just looking at him? Sariolo should be in hospital. Konza should not be letting him away with that. Konza ended up getting the captain's armband tonight, and he's not beating the shit out of Sariolo for doing that. Fucking take that captain's armband back off him. Yeah, that's us going in at half time now, 2 1 down, because somebody's jumped out of the way of a ball. Like that. Jumped out of the way of a ball? It's yeah. unbelievable that you've had to say that. And then Foden did have two nice finishes. Again, we couldn't have expected Rodri to come on to the play late, and <laughs> and then we send Diaby out to try and deal with it. <laughs> it's a pretty bad tackle. He just stepped around, and he steps around Doggy, and goes to Foden, and he whips it first time off the post. Lovely finish from Foden, but it just looks so easy for Rodri just gliding through. Yeah, like... To be fair to Diaby, Rodri loses the ball. He loses the ball and he gets lucky. But the the big issue here is we don't react to it. Like there is nothing more frustrating than players not reacting, not sensing an opportunity. Like as soon as Diaby gets a toe on that ball, go out to it. Go out to the fucking ball. Sometimes the danger is the ball that's live on the pitch at the edge of your box. What are you worried about space and behind you for? For Jack Grealish to pick it up and then roll one around the corner to fucking Bernardo Silva, who's in a worse position than him. Don't worry about the space. Rodri is bearing down on your goals. He's The ball has been knocked up against his shin. Go out and win it now. And the worst thing about it is Douglas Louise. And Carlos are both there. We don't definitely don't need the two of them there. One of these get out on his fucking toes. They should have actually been backing up Diaby to allow Diaby to dive in. Diaby's a winger. He can't fucking tackle. Mm. He definitely doesn't have any strength in his tackles. We just found out here. But Diaby should be allowed to dive in and then be backed up by a centre midfielder. A centre midfielder should judge that. Diaby is almost certainly going to get skinned here. But that means the guy will just be coming around the corner at speed and I can just take the ball off him. To not sense that is terrible. And the fourth and final nail in our coffin was Callum Chambers setting up Phil Foden. <laughs> and once again, lovely finish. Phil Foden buries it into the top right corner. But Jesus Christ, he's going to do that when you give him the ball to the edge of the box. <laughs> Yeah, I, sorry, I, I don't know why I'm laughing. I get my composure there. We, we had Callum Chambers playing centre midfield against Man City. <laughs> Man, Man City gave us the ball back and we gave the world of comedy Callum Chambers. Callum Chambers has the ball at his feet and then he runs into Longley or, or Carlos, I can't remember which one it is, runs into him and still somehow manages to keep the ball like a fucking clown running on top of a ball in the, on a, in the circus. <laughs> And then he, he gets his composure and then picks out his man, pings it straight to fucking Man City. What are you playing at, Callum? You have gotten away with murder here. You ran into your own player at the edge of the box and you just passed the ball to Man City. Goal? Of course it's a goal. You're not playing against fucking mugs like yourself. And that's it. That was it. We, we lost a match. Probably expected, especially when we saw the, the, the team sheet that we have to keep stressing was a real thing. But it was a good night on Tuesday night when we saw Spurs dropping points and we've given the advantage back to Spurs again by going and losing this one to Man City. But maybe maybe our top four hopes weren't resting on picking up points with this team away to Man City. But I'm not going to leave the wind in there. I still have some WhatsApps to come. So we'll get to that after a quick break. A few finds before we go anywhere. Look at Dean just scooped one out of play at left back. I think he was looking for Zaniolo. He just scooped it straight out for a throw in. <laughs> that like, there's going to have to be a fine now. Hopefully, we never use it again for people who jump out of the way of a ball when you're in the wall for a free kick. Ah, like that can't be. A, that has to, that's a transfer out of the club. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Zaniolo, <laughs> come down and receive your punishment, and. Ezra Kahn's it's crossing into the keeper's hands. He he has this in him as well. Like hi, hi, Ezra, sorry, first off, Ezra Ezra Kahn's is two weeks, don't forget Ezra Kahn's is getting a fine for not starting a riot after fucking <laughs> Danny Ola jumped out of the way of a shit free kick. It's one down from a transfer out of the club. But the <laughs> he, he keeps he doesn't keep doing it, but when he crosses into the keeper's hands, it's really annoying because it has the sort of direction where you think and 
and he has a look about him and, and he's whipping the ball like he, he's expecting it to curl away from the keeper and have this beautiful bend and beautiful arc on it. And it never does. It just goes straight to the keeper. He gets the first part right and then he doesn't have the curl or anything else to take it away from the keeper. Yeah, I, I've got I've got news for Ezra Kanza. He's not Douglas Louise. I mean, stop trying to play this ball. But also, we actually had people in the box there. There was a big toe to the back post on there for Ezra Kanza. The pass he tries to play is shite because, well, because it goes straight into Ortega's hands. But also, what does he think the centre forward is going to do in that position? It wasn't even a centre forward. Mm. It was a fucking centre midfielder playing centre forward. What's he going to do with that ball? He's going to try and flick it on with the back of his head. He's going to take it down with his chest and pop it back out to you. Fucking just swing it into the back post and let people attack it. Don't let people hopelessly go chasing a ball that they can't fucking do nothing, anything with. Yeah. The first WhatsApp winch. The next time we play, I recommend John Duran wear studs. <laughs> <laughs> Fed up watching him slipping all over the pitch tonight. Yeah, it was bad. There was one really, really graphic one. If I thought he was just going to keep going, like if his head was going to get buried into the ground, he hit the fucking ground with such force as well. And I think Man City didn't react to it either. But like, I suppose it was our centre forward doing another ten players to try and get around after that. But he came sprinting back, and he just he lost his legs so comically and just face planted into the ground. Mm-hmm. And the Man City players didn't react because they probably didn't know what to do. Like, is this supposed to be a stoppage in play? You know, is this lad concussed? Is he all right? The second WhatsApp winch is we don't care about goal difference then, no? <laughs> and that, and that's the thing. And uh, on the stream that we're watching, I think I think Jim Beglin just said something like, well, well, Emery knows this game's a lost cause. And it's like, hey, it's not. Like, are we... So we've just thrown in the towel of beating Spurs on goal difference, which we were way ahead of them, by the way, not that long ago. Not until we had an eight-goal swing at Villa Park. And... Like now we've like basically given away a point to them by continuing to leak these big beatings to Spurs, to Newcastle, to Man City. Stop it. Like arrest these slides when they're happening, whatever team you have out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's that, that's the thing. What 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 were Emery's options today? I mean, the goals we conceded, the fo- all the Foden goals were because of the personnel that were on the pitch. Do you think he could have gone more defensive? I don't know. Did he have the players to do that? I don't think so. Once he once he had to make his fourth and fifth choices, he was really scraping the bottom of the barrel. Should he have tried to score once City went four one up? Would that have been an option? Get hit in the counter attack? He brought on fucking Moreno. He brought <laughs> in on the left midfield. back for a centre forward. Played him, played him in a free role in midfield. <laughs> no, the one the one thing we we've discovered from today's game is. Moreno can't play anywhere except on the left because if a ball comes to his right foot again, I don't know what I'm going to fucking do. I'll probably start a riot. <laughs> the last WhatsApp winch is I know we all had a bit of fun about Pep Guardiola dressing down Greenish after the Arsenal match. I know we all had a lot of fun watching Pep Guardiola's press conference about it since talking about he only does it for the cameras, he does it for his ego. In jest, obviously. Well, I don't know if it was. But the question that nobody asked was, what could he possibly have been saying to Jack Grealish for two minutes? <laughs> because whatever it is he's saying, I don't think it's going in. Okay, well, whatever instructions he's given him does not need to last that long for the end product of what we have of Jack Grealish now. Honestly, God, and I know like that this isn't pre-planned, I don't even take any joy from this. This is actually one of the things that's most frustrating, I think, about tonight. It's just watching what a sad sight that's become down the Man City left. Like, genuinely, everybody, close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes. Just think about that match tonight. Were you more relaxed, ever more relaxed during that game than when Jack Grealish got it? It's the one time, honestly, it's the one time that you get your breath back and think, this is okay now for a couple of seconds because they're not going to get through. He's going to poke the ball to somebody offside. He's going to knock it backwards. He's going to pretend to try and take somebody down the line and not go down the line and then turn around again. And it's going to be that over and over. He's going to scream. Like, that was just pitiful. That scream that I heard reverberating around my, my headphones when I was watching the match. We had Mario the first sight on the other screen. 
Rage and I missed that now in hindsight. But this is <laughs> this, this is what this player has become. And like the thought that that, that Guardiola would be giving him any lengthy instructions and this is what he's getting. I mean questions have to be asked about Guardiola then. If that if that's if that's the outcome from it all. Yeah, it felt like about ninety percent of that match was me watching Man City scoop the ball into the air, like absolutely pathetic. And then, sorry, and get to come back to this, I know we lost four one to come back. That's the really frustrating thing. Man City weren't good. They try and scoops over the top, through balls against shins, through balls to people in offside positions. Phil Foden just running into people with the ball. Grealish threw balls to someone in a worse position. I've already referenced that. How many times did he play the worst possible pass to Bernardo Silva? Bernardo Silva doesn't want to be picking the ball up in the byline. He's back to go with Ezri Kanza standing on top of him. Mm. Why are you playing him that pass? Do something more interesting. Don't roll the ball back. I'm, I'm particularly interested in you saying there, we had Mario the first sight on, on the other screen. <laughs> Were you just double jobbing here? What the fuck are you watching that for? We Aston Villa are getting humiliated. Watch that instead. But I have to come back to the Pep Guardiola thing. I think the best thing I discovered this week is that Pep Guardiola has definitely seen those multiple videos of you and I, you and I, (laughs) stating that he's a cunt. And when he comes out and sardonically states that he's He's having a go with Jack Grealish on the pitch for the cameras. It reveals that he is listening to fucking Jason3487 underscore UTFE. (laughs) That he is watching his Twitter account Mm. with interest. It reveals that he is hate-scrolling through Twitter on a Saturday night when he knows he should be trying to get some rest. He knows it's a bad habit. He knows (laughs) knows the glare from the screen is blocking the release of melatonin and fucking up his circadian rhythm. But but he, he's like ninety percent of the population. He can't resist it. I feel like they're having to go at Marta for a sight again. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he also knows as well, and people know that you know. I don't know. For example, that nandrolin can you know increase increase the, the damage to your hair follicles and could result in hair loss. But you know, some people just take that risk. Like some people just do it. Every like. And, it, and to be fair to Pep Guardiola, everybody loves throwing on their snorkel and going for a swim in the sewer of the reply section of a football tweet, let's be honest. And I and I actually think it's endearing. It's nice to know that he cares what we have to say, Conan. It also, of course, reveals once again that he is a cunt because it reveals that he thinks everyone watching that press conference is an idiot. Now, I have some sympathy with the fact that he was in a room full of your pals in the media, so maybe he thought, <laughs> I'll get away with this. But he has to know it's being recorded and, and that we, we can see him in essence saying we're stupid for thinking he's doing it for the cameras. That's how daft he thinks we are. He thinks we'll believe him. That I don't know. What what what, what, what does he think we are to believe here? What That, that he is upgrading his 100 million pound player on the pitch because he has anterograde amnesia because he's because he's worried that in the 40 seconds he'll have to wait for Grealish to get into the changing room he'll have forgotten to say to him move the ball faster try to do something for once in your Man City career or whatever his instructions were Mm. does Pep Guardiola want us to believe he has a neurological condition is that his preference here like would Pep Guardiola prefer if we thought he was an idiot as opposed to just an egomaniac like, and listen, if that's what Pep wants, Conor, I can do that. I can call him stupid. I can get on the Twitter now. Let's get Pep Dolardiola trending. Let's smoke out his burner account. Let's fucking do it. If that's what Pep Guardiola wants, I'm up for it. Yeah. I don't have to call him a cunt. It's just the word that describes him the best. Yeah. I mean, we already have proof that Michael Beale has already been at this type of thing on Twitter. <laughs> protecting his own reputation or trying to doom scrolling about himself i mean is it that is it that big a leap from from michael beale to pep guardiola <laughs> okay let's take a break and then we'll get this podcast over with after the award categories <laughs> the peter Enkelman what the fuck award diego carlos's non clearance Grealish just chipped one into no one I think it would have been offside as well and Diego Carlos freaks himself out stands over the ball does nothing and then dummies it to a Man City player behind him but like what, what, what was it Diego Carlos to believe has happened you can't possibly believe that there's no danger as he to expect 
that Aston Villa's a former icon has just kicked the ball to an Aston Villa centre half. Of course he's not. He must think there's somebody behind him. Douglas Ruiz ball across the pitch to Jack Grealish's head. I mean, I mean, thank God because, I mean, like I said in the previous nomination, all he was doing was then rolling the ball to offside men, so it went to the right person. Douglas Ruiz the ball was bouncing up when he tried to ping one out to Kanza, I think, and he just he found Jack Grealish in between. Yeah, that was the problem, that it was indeed to Kanza, which meant that if it gets intercepted, then Jack Grealish is free on goal. Yeah. Kanza took a heavy touch, went straight to Jack Grealish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this was the difference, the one-time voting. But one-time voting benefited from a what-the-fuck award. He pings it in the top corner. But Kanza's heavy touch gives it to Grealish. He sort of threw on the left, ends up pulling it back. And it comes to Rodri, who's blocked down. There's loads of players around him by the time it's pulled back. The Chambers, the Foden one's going to take some beating. And the only other one, with probably the worst, to be honest, even though Chambers gave away a goal directly. And we're not even including Zaniolo in this for some reason, just because I didn't write him down. Is the <laughs> And there's nothing we can do about that now. <laughs> Telemann's fallen over. Oh, per- oh my God. Jesus, a perfectly fine Olsen pass out to him. And Telemann seems to... I seem surprised the ball's come to him and then trips over it. I, what, what was worse? Was Chambers worse? Was Zaniolo's worse? Or was Telemans falling over his ball worse? I think Telemans falling over the ball is actually the worst. Like at least Callum Chambers, at least there's some Villa players between Foden and the yeah. goals whenever Foden picks it up. Telemans has just lost the ball in the middle of the pitch with nobody near him except for two Man City players. App, like, sorry, the winner is actually who was it? Bob that picked them up off it. I, can't, I actually can't remember who it was. Whoever picked that ball up is the winner of the What the Fuck Award because they just run over the top of the ball even worse <laughs> than Yuri Tielemans did. <laughs> yeah, and at least Zaniolo could be justified in thinking, "Well, that ball is going to hit me." You know, at least there's some. That's not that, no, no, that's not justified. <laughs> the only thing that saves Aniolo here is that he's actually showing a bit of decent athleticism. He's like he, he's, he's showing <laughs> he's showing that he can move his body. <laughs> right, Yuri Tielemans is the winner of this award. Let's go to the Ronnie Rosenthal Award. We show like, but before before we even get into these nominations, did they show Grealish's past to? To Alvarez, like at the very start of the match, five times he was offside. He was offside, and he just kept showing us over and over. Maybe they thought this was going to be the narrative of the match. And Grealish actually had a volley then into the ground from a Doku volley. I think it was Rodri into the box, pings it out to Doku, volleys it with a pullback type of thing. Grealish catches it purely on the volley, it bounces. And this is when I was a bit worried about Olsen at this stage because he was really struggling to get over to what was a tame shot in the end. Yeah, but I, I, this is when I started to feel a bit more relaxed about how shit Man City were, how desperate were they. Jack Reelys was claiming a corner because it took a deflection off the fucking groin. It's pathetic. Also made a big save with his right foot on Alvarez, who went down the, the right-hand side. And then it was a good ball across from Bernardo Silva then as well. Grealish played it to him on the byline and he dinked it up. And he, Alvarez is under it the whole time, so it wasn't really that big a threat. I don't even know if we had to concede the corner, but we can't blame Olsen for that. Yeah, the big, big Robert Martinez. I mean, Olsen comes out and just smothers the smothers the pitch for poor Alvarez. And the, the, the later on, then there's the Silva one. Yep. I mean, I, I, I christened this lad Rabbit Olsen at one stage because he looked terrified when he was out in the pitch. But Jesus Christ, it was the Man City players who were startled by Robin Olsen today. Comfortably yep. conceded four goals. Comfortably his best performance for Aston Villa, even on the ball. Yeah. Some of the passes he was picking out, he was he was brilliant. Unfortunately for Robin Olsen, my wife at one stage looked up and said, Jesus, he looks so old. And boy, <laughs> did I laugh, Conan. <laughs> I was like, no, it's okay, don't worry. I've checked his Wikipedia page. I actually said that to my wife. I was like, look at this guy here. I was just trying to sort of prep her. I, it's, it's, it's really sad. It's not, it's not that I'm trying to prep her. It's that I... I want to get Villa's excuses in early to somebody who doesn't care. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, we're probably going to lose this match, but we have 10 players missing. And actually, Martinez isn't even there. I look at this as the guy who's playing instead of Martin. Anyway, Martinez won the best award. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is the guy. And I did, of him. I did say every time he plays, Liam brings up his age. And she said, what age is he? And I said, I'm happy he asked. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's not as old as he looks. But actually, sorry. Robert Olsen was brilliant. 
and the save on Silva was pretty, like that was probably in stark contrast to the stuff we said about me. He really just ate that, didn't he? Silva's taking it on the spin, and Olsen's out on him quickly. He's brave. He stands up, and like, we were so flat. Like this again, like Tim is just taking out so easily. Ball rolls in behind him, but Olsen reads it well and. Yeah, his saves were good. It was really good of his feet. He was good in the air. It was actually a really good performance from him. Yeah, and even just one, like, you've covered all the things that were good about him there, and that's just another thing. We said he was good with his feet, but he, he can fucking ping that ball without very much effort at all. Like, he can really move the ball 60, 70 metres being closed down because he doesn't have to move his leg back that far. Maybe he can't. He's mm. so old looking. Maybe his legs are uh, starting to give way and he can't actually get a big swing in his hips. Robin Austin was brilliant tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Rico Lewis had one that was just bouncing up from him and he, he catches it really badly pulls it wide and then from an Aston Villa point of view just this is a good break it was Douglas Louise Zaniolo played the ball in the team and Dougie's away and then he gets it to Diaby on the right um, we sort of had a man over but it was very briefly and then Diaby does the right thing I think gets it back to Douglas Louise and he just like, he doesn't catch it right he needs to whip it he needs to pull it a bit more and it's very it's very under the ball. It's a polite shot almost in the end. And we get a corner from it. And is it long way to flick it on? Like, so we could have actually scored mm. twice there from from the one passage, I would say. Yeah, we only got one of those goals. <laughs> uh, did the wee strike the wild like that? I mean, how many times? And we, can't, we can't be hypocrites. How many times have we asked them to take the shot yeah. early <laughs> rather than just getting closed down? I mean, City had the pass to the Abbey is slightly behind the Abbey. The Abbey doesn't move it quickly enough to Louise. The pass to Louise is slightly behind him. It's over now. Like the, the move that we thought we had is over. So let's get the shot away. And it's close enough to the top corner. I mean, Ortega is a big, big man, so he doesn't have to do a lot to get it over the bar. But he forces a corner, and he forces a corner that we nearly get a goal from. And the header from Longley, it's a good corner, and the header, the header's really good. I mean, he's facing away, he's mm. facing the wrong direction, he's running towards the ball. So to get that back on target probably takes too much off the ball, and it makes it easier for Ortega. But it's a really good effort from Longley, it's a really good corner. Really should have had an assist in fairness. He pulls one back. I should say in fairness, I mean, Oscar Bob was standing in about 20 yards of space in our box and he misses the ball. Terrible. That's, that's probably the winner, to be honest. And Sergio Gomez hit the post for City. And well, our big probably nomination is Alex Moreno, like you said, around the back from the corner. There it is, sitting up on his right foot. And there it is. He does that thing that we do sometimes. We miss the ball. <laughs> yeah just just edit in me talking about somebody missing the ball for us <laughs> but that, that looks so weird it, it, it was like he he was trying to find his feet he was trying to step properly i don't know like he was doing a skip or something mm. it's like it, it was like he forgot how to strike a ball maybe he just literally doesn't know how to hit a ball with his right foot and he was confused by his left foot being the one that was standing i don't know but it looked mental Let's go to the ULEC Glen Whelan take a 90 minute penalty award and there's only one place to start really because and this encompasses a lot of maybe the different issues now that we're going to talk about but what, what was this shape? Because I've said before Tim seemed to be at the back, he seemed to be in midfield, he was obviously playing defensive midfield but told to drop back into a back five but then it meant that our, our out of possession shape and correct me if I'm wrong but it, it looked like five at the back it looked like Douglas Louise sort of on his own there and then it looked like Morgan Rogers up top Zaniolo and Diaby at either side and who, who am I missing like, who, who, who was he who Duran, Duran was running around sometimes yeah. and and Duran I don't know like so sometimes it went into a 6-2-2 and Zaniolo looked like he was talking in on the left hand side and maybe that was a bit clearer Again, I don't think it was the right thing to do against Man City, but Douglas Ruiz, in fairness, he didn't have a good game, but I don't see how he could have had a good game in this shape. Yeah, I was I was wondering, what was this team decided today? Like, you know, have there been so many people sick? Have there been so many, you know, little knocks, little niggles, little injuries? that nobody had a chance to learn how we were going to play. I think there's probably a different issue there, if, if that is the case, because we should be playing with the first team and our second team playing like this, mm. playing the way we were going to play today. But the shape the shape was bizarre. The shape was bizarre when we weren't in a, a 
flat five, it was a four four two. The four four two wasn't working either. Morgan Rogers shouldn't be shouldn't be concerned about the centre halves being on the ball. Playing Man City at the Etihad, yeah. we had to get a lot tighter. Like there's, there's no excuse for that. Morgan Rogers just floating around, not getting involved at all. Do you see Morgan Rogers trying to win the ball at any stage? No. Today? I don't. I don't actually remember him putting in a tackle. I remember Tim Arubin putting in a tackle a couple of times in the first half. I don't remember him on the ball at all. And the big problem with this system as well. Anytime the ball came to Morgan Rogers in the first half, he, he didn't. He couldn't control of it. He couldn't get control of it. And I, I said his only touches of the game were for the goal. He played a raking ball out to Leon Bailey in the 85th minute. I think. Mm. I honestly can't believe him having the ball or me going fucking control it, man. What is going on here? So then, once you do that. You lose the ball again, then you're just asking Douglas Louise to cover midfield himself again, running after five different Man City players. He's going to be fucking knackered. He's going to be getting booked. He's going to be clipping people's ankles at the <laughs> end of the box because he's pissed off because we don't have the ball and because he's on his own trying to defend that midfield. It's strange. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what we were trying to do, but I'm also not sure that we had an opportunity to try something. I suspect. The issue was with the change in personnel last minute. Yeah, because I actually had Morgan Rogers in line for the Remy Yard. Are you even bothered, Award? <laughs> but I did want to bear in mind the context. The context A, that we're away to Man City, and, and B, the team that we're playing, and C, probably the team was put together, just patched up last minute. There's a nomination here in the you like Graham Whelan take a 90th minute penalty award, which is Moreno coming onto midfield, whatever you're patching up. That was, a, that was a strange decision anyway. Yeah, sorry, just to get back to the shape, just very, very briefly. Very strange that we did decide to play with Rodgers and Duran up front out of possession. I mean, Rodgers has played left side of midfield before. Yeah. It wouldn't have been completely alien for him to ask him to drop back in there as well. Let Zaniolo tuck into the midfield a little bit more to give Tim and Dougie, particularly Dougie, a hand in there. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm really not sure what the thinking was there. I mean, like, let Ruben Diaz have the ball would be my advice yeah. in most games. <laughs> Strange. There, well, uh, this is, sorry, but there's there's another thing that pissed me off, and it's the last nomination I have here, but it's it's... The nature of the subs as well, not not even personnel. It's it's the fact that the goal was coming, the third goal was coming, and we had mm-hmm. Bailey up our sleeve. Like the, the Leon Bailey is probably a, a whole nomination on its own. Definitely the winner. Actually, it's play Leon Bailey for fuck. Especially if you're putting out this team, there's no excuse to not be playing him. If you're playing Morgan Rogers up front, put Leon Bailey up front. Put the Abbey up front. Put Bailey on the right. Maybe he was sick. I don't know. But we brought the subs on after an hour and we brought them on straight after a goal and we know it was over at that stage 3-1 it was too late it was too, he needed to he needed yeah. to act quicker and he didn't he needed to get Leon Bailey onto the pitch absolutely and if you're talking about maybe he was sick there I'll tell you something Conan I don't care <laughs> if Tim Douglas Louise Morgan Roger any I don't care of any of them were struck down with whatever illness comes to whoever's listening to this mind, first of all. A really bad one, preferably, to make the point here. Callum Chambers coming on to <laughs> midfield is not a solution to that. That That is not like that. <laughs> you're, 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 you're giving somebody a worse disease. <laughs> That's what you're doing there, Conan. You're not, you're, not cre- you're not solving the issue here. Like that's like walking into the doctor and him punching you in the face before he before he starts talking to you. This isn't going to help. I don't know what you think you're doing here, doctor, but that's not the fucking solution. Callum Chambers can't come into your midfield ever. We were playing Man City at the area. I re- I honestly I can't emphasize enough how little I care about the welfare and the well being of the Aston Villa players. <laughs> fucking stay on the pitch for the next thirty minutes. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, we have said over and over, this is business time, this is war time. Send them back out there, strap them up, tell them to get on with it. <laughs> Let's do the Vyman meter. I want to try and end this quickly because, look, as much as I enjoy chatting to you, as much as I enjoy doing this podcast, as much as I really enjoy <laughs> our listeners coming and listening for this long and sharing it on and stuff, they're, they're very sound like that. I'm not enjoying reliving this game for this long. I want to try and move on with my life. I want to try and get back into a more positive frame of mind and I want to catch up on Mario first sight but the <laughs> the Vima meter going up I mean we have to mention 
John Duran's left footed volley connections, they're very impressive. <laughs> I know he was offside. But Jesus Christ, it feels like he'll catch any type of ball played to him in there with his left foot so cleanly and so ferociously. Yeah, I actually had forgotten about that, and it, it wasn't your right to not nominate it for the Rosenthal because I'm sick of people talking about chances <laughs> that teams have had against Aston Villa whenever they're offside. But it is definitely worth mentioning for two reasons. Because the pass as well yeah. is out of this world. The angle and the shape on that ball from Douglas Louise, who you hate for some reason, is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. And the connection, you're right, the connection for Duran is really good. Yeah. It's a really good save from Ortega as well. But for Duran to get that on target with power as he's fallen, ball dropping out of the sky... <laughs> absolutely ridiculous yeah. it would have been an incredible goal if he wasn't three yards offside so we probably shouldn't talk about it <laughs> we, we do need to just when we are playing Duran especially when we're starting him in matches like this we we need to embrace that a bit more like do like yeah. the Rogers ball to him is obviously weighted and very clever <laughs> and everything like that but there is an element of pushing it in front of Duran and letting him get after it and also like this chance to put the, put the ball up for him he's going to catch it if he doesn't catch it he'll be elbowing somebody in the face and he'll hold it up some way we don't know how but he will that's if he's not falling over as well in the other case Dur- Duran is probably still going up on the Vima meter going down Emery's left foot fetish Beeberts on Twitter pointed this out. He said, Pau, Mings, Longley, Moreno, McGinn, Rogers, Luca Dean, Kellyman, Zaniolo, Diaby, Bailey, Duran. It's actually, it's actually unbelievable when you see it when you see it rhymed <laughs> off like that. That is absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's absolutely ridiculous. I, I can't believe I, I've missed that. Yeah. That, that comfortably. Where's 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 your man Stato? Get get him on this. We must have the yeah. most left footers in the Premier League. Yeah. AVFC Stato, there's a there's a job for you, and we will let you include Leon Bailey on this list. <laughs> going up, I've got Longley going up. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I think I think Longley's whole season he could be going up. I think Longley has been much better than anybody could possibly have hoped for <laughs> since we signed him. <laughs> Robin Olsen's going up. Do you have anything else to say about him? It was a really good performance. To be honest, when I saw he was coming in, I thought that was the last straw. Even even when we had the team and Martin is in nets, I was still thinking, ah, okay, you know, let's see what Duran can do here. But <laughs> but when Martin is went out, I thought, ah, well, that's it, that's it, that's it over. But uh, Olsen w- was was very good, like you say, and absolutely had nothing to do with this result in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, also was very good, and you're right. It was just such kicking the balls whenever the team sheet came out initially, and then to get that added on on top of it. But he he was really good tonight, Conor Robin Olsen was really good. <laughs> Going down, Morgan Rogers. Don't think we'll have any arguments there. Going down, I think Zaniolo has to go down, doesn't he? I mean, it's it's, it's always Zaniolo. Such a strange footballer. Yeah. Like, Saniolo looks like he's trying his heart out and then looks like he doesn't give a fuck all within the space of 10 seconds. <laughs> Saniolo looks like he's really big and strong. Then looks like he's throwing himself on the ground or jumping out of the way of a shit free kick. Not that long before that free kick went in. Saniolo would be good up in the vine. I mean, probably should be nominated for the, Mel- the Paul Merson. Oh, that's just filthy award. There was one that was coming over the top and Saniolo chests it down to Olsen. Like, never mind. Like, he's chest at the ball down as he's fallen. Like, the quality mm. of that is absolutely ridiculous. But he's also defending Doku brilliantly. Yeah. He's holding him up. He's getting dragged to the to the ground. He's tracked him. Zaniolo has tracked him into the box. Yeah. And he's and then he's controlled the ball down perfectly for Olsen. And then the next thing he does is jump, the, jump out of the way of the fucking ball. Yeah. He's just, he's, he's unexplainable. And sometimes you can see him reminding himself to run back. Like he's, he's put his hands in there. He's like, oh yeah, sorry. I'm supposed to be running back now. I've been drilled. This has been drilled into me for the last three days. But for some reason, I forget every fucking 10 seconds. Weirdo. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's probably sums it up perfectly. And that's why, that's why when we win, we just sort of accept the weirdness. And it's it's endearing. It's funny then as well. Like we, we, we've gotten away with it. It's, do you remember <laughs> that was why the Tim Sherwood era? Like, don't worry, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole again. But that's why that was so <laughs> enjoyable. Remember the 
the vine back then that was going around. It was the app that everyone used, and it was Tim Sherry. <laughs> just go, just going in to sit down at a press conference table, looking giddy after another win, and it was accompanied with the song over the top that was playing. I've been getting away with it all my life. <laughs> that was perfect. perfect. And there was always that feeling with Tim Sherwood. And that's sort of what you have with Zanny Olo. And when it goes well, it's just enjoyable. And you can laugh about it. But when it goes badly, then it's like, okay, we're all we're all complicit here in a way. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else needs mention. Maybe we should mention it on Emery calling... Colin Morgan Rogers a championship player in training quite often, it seems, according to Morgan Rogers. <laughs> he said this in the build up to the match. He said, You know, Emery likes to remind me that I'm a championship player. <laughs> it's like, well, geez. fucking Morgan Rogers went out of his way to remind us that he's a championship player tonight. <laughs> Anybody else in particular that you want to mention? We don't need to bring Callum Chambers into this. <laughs> we didn't need to bring Callum Chambers into the match tonight, Conan. That's the most important thing. <laughs> All right, let's just. Draw a line in the sand. Let's just hope whatever's going around the camp. <laughs> Not ACL wise, I mean sickness wise, it seems <laughs> that starts clearing up over the next few days and we can get a clean bill of health as much as we can this season. Fit and ready to go over Villa Park for Brentford on Saturday. We need to get that. We need to get those three points in the bag. We need to try and get back to to getting this back of in our own control again. We need to start making a bloody dent into this goal difference that we've taken another hit on but anyway like, I'm going I'm going off and on again let's just move aside let's just move on and enjoy the rest of your week thanks for listening <laughs> and thanks for all the support as always we'll chat to you on Saturday